Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop, it means to bring something into being, or to develop something that's already there. In this case, we're trying to develop qualities of mindfulness, alertness, ardency, to get the mind into concentration. You're mindful of the, the breath coming in, going out. You keep remembering to stay here. You try your best not to go someplace else. And then you're alert. On the one hand, you're alert to the breath itself, what it's doing, how it feels, where you notice it, most clearly in the body. And you're also alert to the state of the mind, because sometimes the mind will stay with the breath, and sometimes it decides it wants to go traveling around. And you've got to watch out for that, because you want to make sure that it stays here. Or if it does start to travel around, you want to bring it right back. And that brings in the third quality, which is ardency. You're trying to do this well, so that while you are here, you're really sensitive to the breath. Because the more sensitive you are, the more interesting the breath becomes, and the more satisfying and the more nourishing it feels just to be here breathing. At the same time, you want to be clearly alert to the fact when the mind goes away that you bring it right back. You don't wait. You don't peek into each little thought as if it were present. Say, what's inside the wrapping here? What's inside the wrapping there? Because you open up the box and you suddenly just find yourself swallowed in. which relates to another word that is related to bhavana, the word bhava. It means becoming. In the Buddha's analysis of becoming, it's you're taking on an identity in a world of experience. And both the identity and the world are based around a desire. For instance, you're sitting here, and suddenly you decide you're hungry, and you think of going out and getting some pizza after the meditation is over. All of a sudden you find yourself in that world, the world where pizza is the main object. In that part of the world, the things that are relevant to the pizza are part of that world. Things that are totally irrelevant to your quest for pizza, they're not part of that world at all. So the fact that you have the means to get the pizza or the means to make the pizza, that's part of that world. And if there are any obstacles getting the pizza, that's part of that world. But things that are totally irrelevant to the pizza, they're not part of that world at all. And there's that identity that you take on. On the one hand, there's the you who hopes to consume the pizza. There's the you who hopes to be able to produce it, get it, obtain it. And then there's the you that's watching all this, trying to decide, have you decided on the right pizza? Have you decided on the right way? Is there a better way of doing this? Three senses of you right there. Of course, the fact that you're meditating, that's also a becoming. The desire here is to get the mind to settle down. The world here is the world of your body, from the top of the head down to the soles of the feet, and all the sensations you have inside that body. What you're trying to do is try to mingle the sensations, adjust the sensations as you breathe in, as you breathe out. So this is a good place to stay. So there's the you who's going to be doing the meditating, that's the producer. Then there's the you who's going to be enjoying the results, that's the consumer. And finally, the you that's watching over all this to make sure that you're doing it well, offering suggestions if you're not doing it so well. So you've got a state of becoming right here. You want to maintain this one. Because when you set up your mind that you're going to maintain a particular state of becoming, that's when you see the process of becoming a lot more clearly. When another becoming appears in the mind, you can recognize, okay, this is outside of the pale. And in the beginning, it's going to be hard to resist, because the mind's tendency is just to go traveling around. That was a John Sowat's definition for becoming. It's places where the mind travels. As long as you're just traveling around with no particular purpose in mind, you hardly notice what's going on at all. It just seems to slide from one thing to the next to the next, and it's all part of the same process. But if you ask yourself afterwards, well, where did you go? Like asking a child at the end of the day, where did you go? Well, the child just happened to wander around in line with its, its likes and dislikes, with no clear purpose. 
it's going to be hard for it to say. But if the child had been given a task, say, you go down to the store, you buy this, and you come right back, then you can quiz the child, okay, did you actually stay on the path to the store, or did you wander off the path, and did you come right back? Then the child will probably remember a lot better, because the child had a purpose. So you give the mind a purpose here. The purpose is to settle down with the breath, make it comfortable. This is the good becoming you want right now. So that you can see the other becomings as they, as they form, and recognize them for what they're doing. So in the course of getting a place for the mind to settle down and get a sense of well-being, you're also learning about the mind, about all of its processes. And these are particularly good processes to know. Because as the Buddha pointed out, when you die and go on to another life, it's the same processes. We all know that the Buddha taught rebirth, but it, what's interesting, he never has the word rebirth in his vocabulary. He just talks about birth. But he does talk about a process he calls further becoming. That's the process that leads to another birth. And he says it's like a fire going from one house to another. In those days they believed that the fire, in order to burn, had to hold on to something. And so in between the two houses it's holding on to the wind. The wind stands for craving. And it's these cravings that take us to another life. And the problem is that the cravings that take us to another life are also the cravings that lead to suffering, that cause suffering. There are three altogether. This craving for sensuality, craving for more becoming, and then craving for the destruction of whatever becoming you have. And all three of these can take you to places you may not want to go. On the one hand, you imagine yourself, you're on your deathbed, you're facing your death. You start thinking about all the pleasures you're going to miss. And for most people who haven't been meditating, the only alternative they have to pain is sensual pleasure. So they're thinking about sensual pleasures. And when the time comes when you have to leave the body, you may just latch on to a sensual desire and follow it wherever it might take you. Or you may realize that you're leaving this body, you're leaving this identity, you're leaving this world, and you're afraid of being annihilated. And so of the opportunity for another body and another world, another identity, you'll go for it. Or given the pain that often happens. And the sorrow that often happens at death, some people decide they'd just rather be snuffed out, totally annihilated. That, they, they said, would be peace. But what happens is that there's the you who wants the peace, and then the world in which the you, that, that you operates. So that you're actually creating a new state of becoming. And as you realize, any of the, the, these three cravings, it may sound nice that you're going to go in line with your cravings. You think, well, whatever I crave must be good, must be desirable. But you know what happens to cravings? They get waylaid. They get twisted around. As the Buddha said, there's nothing as quick as the human mind, or any mind. There's nothing as quick in nature to reverse itself as the mind. So you think you're heading in a place you want, then something else happens, something interferes, there's an obstacle. And you end up finding yourself out of desperation, just latching onto anything. That's a scary thought. So you want to be able to understand these processes as they're happening, so you don't get deluded by them, and you don't latch onto them out of desperation and just be willing to go anywhere, which is why we meditate here now. Because we get to see these processes as they're happening. Each time a new thought appears in the mind, you can begin to see it form. You're, you're trying to make sure you don't go with it. And as you zap it, in other words, once you sense there's a stirring of a new thought or a new little world inside the mind, you just breathe right through it. And it'll go away. Part of the problem, though, is this part of the mind who wants to see, what is this? It's like you're getting a present. You want to open up the wrapper and see what's inside. The problem with these presents is you open up the wrapper and it sucks you in. And just because something comes in a nice-looking package doesn't mean that it's going to have something nice inside. So you want to train the mind, one, so it's not desperate. 
This is one of the reasons why we focus on breathing in a way that's comfortable. And two, train the mind so that it knows what's going on. These steps that go from craving to clinging, from clinging to a state of becoming, and then from becoming to taking birth in that becoming. That's what's going to happen at the end of life. And that's what's happening in your mind all the time. So you want to study it, understand it, so you're not deluded by it. I mean, ideally you want to get to the point where you don't have to follow any of these processes at all. But in mastering the processes, you, you're beginning to realize, as the Buddha said, craving for annihilation is also a cause for suffering. So what do you do? Well, as he says, there's a different kind of desire, the desire to gain escape from this. And he says, that's actually a good desire. It's part of the path. It comes under right effort. And you focus that desire on understanding the steps that lead up to becoming. What causes clinging? Well, there's craving. What causes the craving? Well, there's a feeling. What causes the feeling? There's contact. Turn to take it apart into these impersonal things, without any sense of you or a world around them. And you begin to see that these are the raw materials from which that becoming was created, and there's not much there. Just things that arise, pass away, arise, pass away. Nothing of any substance, nothing that they could really rely on. And hoping to find happiness out of these unreliable things is like hoping to build a, a good house out of really bad materials. So you develop a sense of dispassion for the whole process. That's what liberates you. So we're here in the present moment not only for the sake of a sense of well-being and peace in the present moment, but also to understand what's going on in the mind. How does the mind create these states of becoming? And why does it suffer every time it does? And why does it keep on doing it? When you've seen that, you've gained knowledge that's going to be really useful all the way through life and all the way through death. Even though you start out just hoping to have a sense of peace for a little while, there's a lot more to learn here. A lot of really valuable things you can learn about yourself. So give this your full attention. Mindful, ardent, alert. And see what you learn.